We live in an age of conspiracy. Some of those conspiracies turn out to be true, while others border on downright lunacy. Now, while your uncle can argue with somebody across the globe over the internet whether or not the earth is flat, conspiracies have existed long before the internet, and they have had the same appeal throughout time, and that is being able to be the one to uncover the secret that nobody else knows. But what happens when a joke to create the ultimate conspiracy stumbles upon a truth and uncovers more knowledge behind the secrets of the various societies who have been charged to keep them? This is the question that Foucault's pendulum asks and creates a lot of discussion around fictions and their truth and also the obsession in connection making regardless of whether there is truth in it and it ends up uncovering the reality around us. Talking is hard. Now, Foucault's pendulum is actually quite an interesting device. It might look like a regular pendulum, but it is not on a fixed axis, right? So it is not on a hinge that simply rotates left and right. What it is, it is, think of it as a string attached to a ceiling with a weight at the bottom of that string, and it can rotate in all, um, in all directions, although it is kept rotating in a single direction. So what's the point of Foucault's pendulum? The point is, is that an interesting phenomenon happens where the Earth ends up rotating underneath the pendulum in relation to how close or far away you are from the equator. So. If you were to be somewhere away from the equator and you were to visit Foucault's pendulum, it might be swinging towards one corner of the room. And if you were to come back several hours later, it might be swinging closer to another corner of the room simply because the earth is actually rotating underneath the pendulum. Hypothetically, if you put one of these on a North Pole, uh, the world would ro make one full rotation every 24 hours underneath one of these pendulums. Now, you can infer a lot of different symbolism from something that represents a fixed point under which the world uh, turns. Although the pendulum itself actually is implicated in uh, a plot device for Foucault's pendulum, which is the capital P plan. And the plan is what this entire book circles around. So Umberto Eco is the author of this and he is a uh, he's a famed Italian author but he's also a professor of semiotics which I think is important because semiotics is the study of symbols. Something really pertinent to the literary field uh, especially for a little bit more highbrow literature you know capital L literary style of writing and this is definitely a literary book. It is very heady, it is very dense, it is more thematic driven by far than than it is plot driven and I would even say character driven to be honest with you. Um, I would border on saying that this is less a conventional narrative than it is a 650 page thought experiment and I'll explain why as we get into this. So going into this understand that there's not really much to spoil about Foucault's pendulum. Most of the plot is on the back jacket cover and there's not a lot of plot in this. The plot takes place I would say probably in about 60 pages out of a 650 page novel and that's not to de de deter anybody from reading it that's just to set some expectation for you because if you go into this expecting something that's not there you're gonna be pretty disappointed so what is there what what happens in Foucault's pendulum we end up following three characters uh, Casabon uh, Jacobo Belbo uh, Jacobi Belbo and Dio Tavelli and they work for a publishing company where people come in and pitch them on ideas. Early on in the book, somebody comes in and pitches them on an idea that he has for a book that uncovers the secrets of the Knights Templar. Probably one of the most famed secret society kind of conspiracy theory basis for a lot that goes on, right? Knights Templar, Freemasons, Illuminati. If you've watched any movies or read any books from Dan Brown, you probably get a slight flavor of this. However, if you've ever, uh, taken in any of that man's work and you have thought this is way off base this man has no idea what he's talking about this is academically vapid there's nothing here um, this is all kind of titillating without any substance then Foucault's pendulum is probably going to be right up your alley because it deals less with the plot mechanics and kind of the suspense of the story and very much so with the academic kind of playing around with the ideas and the histories and how to connect them together 
So what ends up happening is uh, they actually refer to these conspiracy theorists as diabolicals, and they're very skeptical of these people at first. These people keep coming in and pitching them for book ideas until one day they say, look, why don't we just come up with our own conspiracy theory? We are well read. We know more than these people are. We're getting a lot of information from all these different people. Why don't we just combine it all and use our, our know-how to create the ultimate conspiracy theory? And that is the crux of the book. They created conspiracy theory that becomes so fleshed out and so real that it begins to uncover truths about actual conspiracies and secret societies that are existing. Now, if you want a window into those secret societies, you're not going to get it. Okay, I want to lay that out right away so that nobody is disappointed. This whole book, again, and I'm going to say this a lot, centers around the plan and the construction of the plan. The point isn't even the consequences of the plan, which is kind of jumbled together in a climax and slightly frustrating denouement. The point is, is the act of constructing the plan and what it does to the characters. At first, these characters are, are skeptical with the diabolicals until they become absolutely obsessed with the act of connection making. Connection making so obsessive that it disregards any amount of truth and only follows its own logic such that if somebody were to try to pick apart the the conspiracy that they're building and try to find plot holes in it or reasons why it wouldn't work they would be at a loss and oh there's the keech and it's interesting what echo does here because at once he avoids the pitfalls on making any conclusions about conspiracy theories at the risk of making silly connections that might not make sense by putting characters saying that they're creating their own fiction of of this conspiracy while at the same time explaining and through the inner workings of the story kind of going to a point where the very fiction they're creating does become true and this is a very interesting kind of play between them what's he trying to like if we're trying to pick it apart if we were trying to figure out what he's saying is he's saying that it's only because the connections are vapid so they're not uncovering the truth or is it is it that these men were so thorough that um such a close examination of history inevitably will uncover something that is hidden because something has to be there is there no connection at all to it i will say that i do feel like i miss quite a bit of what's happening in this novel just trying to keep up with all the historical density within it if you're not a historically if you're not a historian if you don't have the context for a lot of these people you can very easily spend as much time googling these people and just understanding them for the context of what the heck is going on and who he's kind of making who he's thumbing his nose at who he's referencing how these inside jokes are working you can spend as much time basically digging up the background to even understand the novel as you would reading the novel itself which is quite a bit of time because it's 650 pages and it's a long 650 pages okay at one of the i've actually seen praise for this book from somebody who really enjoyed it that said he loved it and the book actually felt longer like it was which isn't something that you typically want to hear from praise from a book you want to hear a book you can't put it down it ended too soon you want more of it you devoured it maybe you, you read it a second time because you wanted more time um, with the book but this is really a book where you have to come to terms with the fact that you're eavesdropping on a conversation the vast majority of this book is three people sitting down and talking. Um, not a lot happens, and I would argue that the plot doesn't really even kick off until the first 250 pages, and even then, it's a slow kickoff. Um, that's when they start constructing the plan, and uh, once they start constructing the plan, there is large swaths of, of info dumps and diatribes about certain ways to make the plan cohesive enough for it to mean something. And by the time it means something, we hit the climax, that seems a little bit unbalanced from the rest of the book we go from a lot of discussion and a lot of talking to a pretty intense climax that seems not to hit the main character that much uh, and the main character's response to that in the denouement is a little bit frustrating for me to be honest with you it made me like him significantly less needless to say from my standpoint i didn't really enjoy this book um, i did force myself to the end of it this is a book that I think is incredibly impressive, the way I think maybe a certain jazz performance might be uh, impressive, but I don't, I'm not gonna go see it all the time. I might 
I, I might witness it and listen to it as like, wow, I really appreciate how difficult this was to create and I can kind of pick apart some of the stuff that th that's happening there. But it's not something that I can sink into and, and put on my favorite album and, and kind of listen through it. This is something where you're either going to love it or you're you're going to have no time of day for it. It's, it's going to be basically a, a bookshelf flex, uh, maybe shelf next to Infinite Jest and War and Peace or something like that. Not, not to make any judgments of those books, but yeah, I have Infinite Jest back there. It will get read soon. For the right person, this is going to be a great book. This is, this is basically 650 pages of lore. This is how do we construct a history? How do we... How do we work together this kind of thought experiment? And in so doing, there is a lot to pick apart in the analysis from a literary perspective. Um, again, as, as a professor of semi uh, semiotics, there's lots of symbols to pick apart here. There's lots of ways that he works that into the narrative and throughout his historical underpinnings. But if you don't have the context for that history, if you um, if you struggle with his all the references, I would argue that if you don't, if you're not digging this book in the first hundred pages, the other 550 pages are not going to redeem it for you. You're really probably going to get a sense of exactly what kind of book this is in the first 20 pages. In the first 20 pages, I found myself already Googling people um, just to make sure that I, I knew who he's talking about. He references uh, Al Hazen, which I believe is a nickname for uh, Ibn al Haytham, the, the father of optics, uh, the pre Newtonian father of optics from the uh, Islamic Golden Age of Science. Which is cool. I mean, I, I didn't know about that guy before, and I ended up watching a documentary about him. But I can't watch a documentary about the other, you know, 55 uh, people that he references, so that I can enjoy the so I can enjoy the book. If you have read this book and you enjoyed it, please let me know. Let me know why you enjoyed it, um, because I, I really struggled with the pacing and I, I struggled with it as a story. Uh, when again, I appreciate it as a thought experiment, but as a narrative, as a story, it was very much lost on me. Doesn't make it a bad book, just makes it outside of me being the target demographic. All right, guys. Um, so let me know what you thought about this book. If you haven't read it uh, and it's on your bookshelf, which a few people have told me about already, let me know why. Um, and then, yeah, uh, stay tuned for the next video, guys. I'm like behind five books uh, that I am meaning to review. Um, lots of stuff going on in my life right now. Uh, but other than that, excited to review a couple books on the horizon, reading some of my favorite books of the year now, and uh, stay tuned for those. All right, guys, uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. What's... We'll